This week's hardware news recap starts off with Intel, who in a recent earnings call announced that their new Kaby Lake architecture has begun shipment to OEMs and other business customers. Kaby Lake is Intel's new 14 nanometer processor and will utilize a 200 series chipset. The Kaby Lake architecture isn't yet moving to retailers, but will be entering volume production in the second half of 2016, right around when AMD Zen is scheduled for arrival. In other earnings news, AMD just posted its second quarter 2016 results, marking a strong recovery for the company's position. AMD's 2016 second quarter earnings posted a revenue of $1.027 billion, a growth year over year from their 2015 second quarter of $942 million. Versus last quarter, AMD's operating loss has improved from $68 million to an $8 million loss, which looks like pennies in face of the company's recent earnings. AMD's recovery is largely attributable to the $150 million merger of their assembly, test, mark, and pack ATMP group, with non-Tong Fujitsu Microelectronics, and reduced losses are resultant of layoffs and other operating expense cuts. AMD now must capitalize on its time with Polaris and Zen to continue their further improvement. Other industry news includes DDR3's steady price decline, something which Anon Tech recently dove into. At Gamers Nexus, we predicted some years ago that the DDR3 to DDR4 crossover to occur around 2016, and that seems to be about right. Prices are now at a new low, with 8GB DDR3 kits available for less than $30. If you're still trying to keep that DDR3 system alive and you want to buy some new RAM, now's a pretty good time to do it. Um, it's also not a bad time to build a new Devil's Canyon PC, as parts are relatively cheap and can be found cheaper than Skylake. But it depends on what you're trying to cobble together. The Titan X was announced this week. No, not that. The new Pascal Titan X, what we're calling the Titan XP, hosts a GP102 GPU with 3584 CUDA cores, a stark climb from the 2560 CUDA cores of the GTX 1080. The GP102 chip will likely host 28 SMs across six GPCs, and it's known to run 12 gigabytes of G5X with a 480 gigabyte a second memory bandwidth. For more depth on the Titan X, check out our launch video or article linked below. We've been liquid cooling most of the new GPUs lately, and it looks like manufacturers are starting to catch up, though their version of liquid cooling is a little more official. Fantex is one of those who've ponied up their GTX 1080 full coverage water block. This block is made for inclusion with open loop liquid cooling systems and is not an all-in-one cooler. The PHGB1080X is made of nickel-plated copper and uses an acrylic surface to showcase the coolant channels. LEDs can be inserted at your discretion and are positionable in up to three locations on the block. The block supports LEDs up to one millimeter in diameter. That block will be priced at $130. And that's it for this week's hardware recap. For sources and articles, check the links in the description. If you want to support us directly, check out the Patreon link and subscribe for more content like this from me, Steven's gone.